Larry, you need to mute your phone. Welcome to another episode of Zoom Hope Live. I don't know about you, but I am truly excited um, to be here another week, um, to be here tuning in with you on Zoom Hope Live. What about you, uh, London? Uh, oh, yes, you all all know that I'm super, super, super excited. Um, I have some friends on. I have some new friends on. And I'm really excited to talk about media ministry, right? I mean, we've mm -hmm. been um, having to, many of us, for the first time, having to deal with media ministry in a way that we hadn't had to before. And so I'm excited that now is the opportunity to do that. I really, really want to invite all of our viewers, invite all of you to like and share this now that on Zoom Hope Live, I invite you to like our page so that you can get the notifications. We do this every single Saturday um, at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a discussion um, that is hope, hopefully um, infusing hope into your life. And so we, we talk about a plethora of things, we cover many different topics. And so if you've been blessed, please take the opportunity now to like our Facebook page, uh -huh. to follow us on Instagram, and to share this particular live on all the platforms that you hold membership on. Um, also, yeah, yeah. I wanna invite you all to send in questions. If you have a media ministry question, please send it in. We have individuals on our panel today that are will be more than um, willing, that are more than willing to answer some of the questions that you have. And so please submit those questions in the comment section and we'll do our best to answer them during this particular report. That's right. That's right. That's right. So um, this week we are going to talk about media ministries, as was just said by our co-host uh, D. London Anderson. Now, um, what do uh, media ministries entails, and how important is my personal church, uh, or, or my church, or my personal social media ministry? in the context that we're living in today? And should I invest my time, my effort, resources into social media right now? These are some of the things that, and perhaps more that we're gonna look at. We have a really good lineup of panelists who are well more than able to answer all our questions today and just uh, infuse hope into the whole ministry of media. So we're going to go now and let you find out who these persons are with us today on Zoom Hope Live. So London, please take us into our first panelist. 
Okay, so our first panelist is Kristen. And so Kristen, um, if you will, please just tell us a little bit um, about yourself. What are you doing nowadays in this pandemic? What's going on in your life? All right, so my name is Kristen Thomas. I am currently a graduate student at the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary at Andrews University, which is where I know London. And I am studying to do full-time ministry and I'm just really excited for, um, unfortunately COVID has been destructive in many ways, but it's also opened up many avenues for technology and, and, and ministry. And so I've just been thankful to participate in various ministry avenues through electronic means during this time. Yes, awesome. yes. And so if you can please share with us as well um, some of the background that you have that will um, aid you in answering and, and having this discussion with us today about media ministries. All right, cool. So I am a techie at heart. I love computers. I studied computer science at the University of Central Florida. And I also have, the, have had the opportunity to be a part of the a social media team, communication team for one of our student-led organizations in the seminary. So I'm always desiring to learn more and I'm so excited for this panel. Yes, 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 mm -hmm. glad to have you, right. glad to have you. Great, so our next person, our next person is actually Amal Alan Martin. He, he is the teaching pastor at the Younger Generation Church. Also the point person for the North American Division uh, Growing Young Adventist Program, which of course it is a brand from the Growing Young Program from the Fuller University. So tell us a little bit more about yourself, Dr. Martin. Wow, what a great introduction. Hello, how do y'all from the Republic of Texas? Hope that you're doing well, that you're safe and, and um, enjoying your, your shelter in place. That's basically what I've been doing. I've been doing nothing. The uh, yeah. basketball just recently reemerged. I don't know what I'm gonna make of them playing over at uh, at the Rodents uh, Kingdom there in Walt Disney World. But hey, we're gonna make the best out of it. Glad to be with you. Thank you for the honor of joining you on your panel today. Um, to answer London's question, because I think it's gonna be coming here, is that Younger Generation Church is the young adult ministry of the Arlington Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we've been online for about a decade now. Awesome. So it, it was really great to have the ministry already in place and as a part of that, We've learned a couple of things along the way, made a lot of mistakes along the way, and they're still making mistakes, but we feel like it gives us a really great um, foray to experiment and innovate on the digital landscape. Yes, yes, awesome, awesome. I love that, I love that answer, right? That you're like, hey, we've been doing this for a while, way before the pandemic, but at the same time, we're still making mistakes as we go along. And that just, I think right there gives people hope that whether they've been doing it for a while or they just started, there is hope to get better. And we're, we're all along this journey. Um, our next panelist today that I would like to introduce to you or um, have her introduce herself really uh, is Kim, um, Ashley. It's Ashley, Ashley Gentles. Uh, I've met Ashley in Texas. Her, her sisters, two of her sisters have been on the platform before her um, and her, her family, her family, they're, they're a lovely group of people. And so Ashley, if you would just tell us a little bit of what you've been doing, um, your, your educational background that informs uh, your, your presence here on this particular, on this particular panel. Hi, my name is Ashley. Some of you might know me as Kim, but um, I'm a software developer and I graduated from Rice University with a degree in computer science just a year ago. Um, and part of the reason why I wanted to participate in this panel is because I'm particularly passionate about using technology to provide services to people in particular, like for government assistance. And that's what really drives my passion. And that has been born out of my, my faith and how I see how Jesus serves others. I feel like I need to find a way to do that within my own profession. And awesome. during the pandemic, I've just been sitting here learning and working. <laughs> All yes. Right. All right. Listen, having working working in the media field the way that you do, I mean, you can work from home, right? You can still get checks 
and still do your job right from your house. I mean, that's, Very convenient. that's it. No, she, she can des uh, develop the software just to do that. Uh, of course, <laughs> for us, maybe she could uh, develop one for Zoom Hope Live. Uh, right. that, that, that would be uh, really off the chain. Um, but we also have, we have, we have with us Tim Koaska. I hope I get that right. So Tim is here with us from the Younger Generation Church, and he's the director of public um, relations there. And as you can see his background, when he came on, I felt bad. So, you know, you're going to have to help me to get rid of this and do something like you. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Tim. Well, hey, happy Sabbath. It's great to be with you all today for this conversation. As you shared, yeah, I'm the public relations director at Younger Generation Church, uh, working with Dr. Martin. Uh, great um, things that he shared about the ministry there. I'm a graduate of Walla Walla University. I studied marketing there, uh, grew up in the Pacific Northwest, um, and moved down here to Texas when I uh, got a job at Southwestern Adventist University. I work as their uh, director of marketing and public relations there. Um, but yeah, I'm passionate about media ministry, uh, founder of Avenus Young Professionals, which is a network of young adults uh, in the Avenus Church. And so, yeah, great to be with you guys today and looking forward to our conversation. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so, of course, you know, um, especially within the Seventh-day Adventist Church, if you're talking about connecting across not only in the younger um, generation church at Arlington, but across the globe, if you're talking about connecting as professionals or as we have looked at in previous uh, previous episode, as we looked at entrepreneurship, Tim is the person to talk to as we connect everyone. Yes, yes, yes. And so now I would like to ask um, Kendra to tell a little bit, tell us a little bit about what she's um, gotten into, what she's doing lately. I'm really, really excited for her to share um, the ministry that she's been leading out in, um, as well as your educational background that informs um, your participation on this panel today. Awesome. I'm really happy to be here today. So um, I am the programming director and host of a theological podcast called Advent Next. And we uh, curate conversations uh, surrounded by curious topics. And so we try to basically the idea behind this platform is to bring in professionals and experts just to talk about their field of research and to educate the laity about things that uh, are important to their faith and can help them dive deeper into their own uh, study of the word or in the ownership of their faith in practical life. And so uh, my background right now, I'm a graduate student at Andrews University uh, in the uh, theology department. And I, before here, I spent about 10 years working with different nonprofits, um, doing marketing and um, media work, basically. Um, and before that, I did uh, my degree in international development and African American studies. Yes, oh. yes, yes. And I just want to make a slight, you know, just highlight one thing slightly that you are in the seminary. You are in the seminary. So she is a graduate student. Um, I know sometimes I, I studied theology in undergrad. And I sometimes say, oh, yeah, I'm in the theology department at Andrews. You know, I'm like, no, you're in the seminary. Okay, got it. Um, so yes, we, she, Kendra, Kendra is also in the seminary. And I really, really am so glad to have you here and for you to share with us the things that you've learned and the things that you're learning. Really appreciate that. Yeah, and you know, I really appreciate that because as pastors, it's good to be able to uh, be able to be masters in other areas, and and definitely that kind of experience it will it will go beyond um, the, the the normal um, day to day traditional experience. It will really develop ministry and take it to another content another level within wherever context um, the Lord would call you to serve. Um, well, we also have Pastor Andre Campbell. Andre is here with us. Um, I, I met him a few years ago uh, as he was actually on T T TBN. And then after that, I met him personally. Um, Andre becomes a good friend of mine. He is an animated film pro producer. Um, if you have heard about it, it's called The Fruit Troops. The fruit troops and of course he's also many other things he's a real motivator he's one who thinks out the box but tell us a little bit more about yourself 
Andre. Oh, wait, wait, we want to hear you. We want to hear you. <laughs> there we go. Now you can yeah, hear me, right? Yeah. I was so ready, too. I was so ready yeah. to hit that button and go. Uh, but it's good to be here with all of you with this great panel. Um, I'm uh, Andre Campbell. I've pastored for 22 years with the Seventh-day Adventist denomination. I've pastored in four conferences and eight churches. Don't try <laughs> to do the math. Uh, but I did spend some time as an associate pastor doing youth ministry. And um, that's where I developed the Fruit Troop. Um, that taught me a big lesson in business. And since then I've dealt with veggie meat. I've been the, the COO of a veggie meat company called Sasoya um, and uh, have gone on from there. But about two years ago, I realized that the world was, the world was changing and the church was, gonna, was, was ignoring a lot of that change. And so mm -hmm. I went back to get a uh, president's and key executive MBA from Pepperdine University, um, graduated in August, 2018. And the major areas of study were economics, finance, organizational behavior, and integrative strategic management. And um, so I have a lot of uh, uh, experience in media, building of apps, and that kind of stuff. So I'm excited to be here with this panel this evening. Yes, we're so glad to have you. We're so glad to have all of you. I mean, when I said that we have a wealth of knowledge on this panel today. Did I not tell you the truth? I think I told you the truth. Uh, we have individuals from different backgrounds, but at the end of the day, they're all yeah. interested in using media for the advancement of the gospel, for the advancement of helping and blessing as many people as they can. Larry, there was something you wanted to add? No, just take us into um, our first question as we get the, this thing rolling. All right, let's go. So the first question that I have um, to give to you all today is how do you use social media? So how do you use social media and other virtual and audio platforms to impact the live, to impact lives in different um, generational cohorts? And so how are you using this to, to how are you using social, social media, audio platforms to be a blessing to people across the generational lines? Um, Tim, I would love, love, love um, if you started off this uh, answering this question. Well, thank you. Yeah, Younger Generation Church, um, we've been streaming our services for the past 10 years on our website and on social media on Facebook. And it's yes. been a great way to, you know, share, um, you know, messages and music with uh, so many people. You know, the cool thing is that not only are people watching YG on their way to their normal church, but they actually there are people from around the world who call YG their home, even though they live somewhere else besides the Republic of Texas. And we are so blessed to have all of them with us. Um, I think that a big thing that we've done in addition to streaming our service is really being active and engaging on social media and using Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and maybe eventually TikTok as platforms where we can really listen to people, hear their ideas, see their experiences, share the stories of them, uh, the stories that they are having and the experiences that they're having. Um, and also now with the pandemic, finding ways to do life groups and virtual connections um, in a virtual setting that feels really engaging uh, and feels really real. So yeah. a variety of different ways that we're, um, you know, connecting with people in a virtual setting. Awesome. I'm really interested. So um, this is, you know, I'm asking this question as a follow up to what you just said. Yeah. Are is, do you all have a team of individuals that make sure to stay engaged with people online? I heard you say that you use these platforms. You're not just posting things, but it sounds like you're, you're saying that you're engaging with people as they're posting things. So yeah. do, do you have a team? How do you all do that yeah. um, at your church? So at YG, we have a number of different teams. We're actually part of the Arlington Seventh-day Adventist Church, which is a 2,500 member uh, church with a variety of resources and a variety of teams. We have a media ministry team that actually is putting in a ton of volunteer hours every weekend mm. to run a multi-cam stream to make sure that all the technology is working. And they're doing things that I could never learn. Like it's just a lot of cool things that they are so dedicated on. Um, we also have YG lead team, which composes of, you know, a social team, public relations team, hospitality, and a variety of other things. And that's a volunteer team of young adults who 
um, is really helping to shape YG, replying to messages, you know, sharing content, engaging with people, both through social media as well as through our in-person activities. And so, awesome. yeah, definitely a big team that's kind of volunteering and collaborating for minutes. Sounds good. Sounds good. So take notes. Y'all take notes. You need a team because you can't learn everything and do everything yourself. Um, Ashley, if you can please answer the same the same question, the initial question about how you're using these platforms um, to be a blessing of, to people across the generational lines. So at its best, um, social media is like a point of connection. It's a point of community. It's a point where you can have conversations and find additional resources and information. So that's how mm -hmm. I personally like to use it. Um, I think it's amazing in terms of like connecting ideas and it's often a bouncing off point for conversations between me and my friends who may or may not be Christian and um, I think it's, it's just um, usually, usually just in a very amazing tool for like finding content to start really important conversations. Yes, yes, yes. And I just wanted to, you know, just follow up with that. Just once again, highlighting that um, actually specifically uses these platforms, um, create creating resources for people and making uh, resources accessible. And so um, that that's something that she's highlighting there and how she utilizes the resources for herself, but also um, makes a point to provide resources to others. And these resources are not just for one particular age group, right? These resources are for people across across the generational lines and so um dr martin if you can oh no go ahead um andre you wanted yeah. to answer this question sure you know it, um in ministry efforts in recent times before covid um, we were using apps like uh, PushPay not only to collect offering, but PushPay in its back end had uh, ways which members could find out where ministry was taking place off campus and actually scheduled to join in. And I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, and so that's one of the ways that social media uh, could impact the lives because different generations will actually show up for ministry efforts. You know, mission is where it is and you can get all generations to get involved in mission. Um, and, and then post COVID now, uh, we have a new challenge and I'm hoping that churches and I and to put that out today, I put it out now that I hope that churches will realize that our buildings are going to become resource centers and that we need to pivot. And, and what's happening is the elderly are feeling left out because they're using the phone on the Zoom conference. They're using the dial in option. And so the digital transformation is really difficult for them. So we mm -hmm. have to become resources, re relevant resources for the elderly. Uh, the young people who understand this stuff can translate it so easily in some ways to an older person. I showed my mother how to stop her Roku stick today on pause. She didn't know how to do that. So uh, <laughs> I, I just see that we have some work to do. Um, but I mean, that's God is, is equipping people to be able to help drive that, it, that growth. Yeah, if, if, if I could interject, um, I, as, as you make that point, Andre, uh, my, my mind goes to you, Dr. Allen, because you taught me, you know, first year in the demon intergenerational church ministry. Um, that is a reality that the older generation might not be able to um, be versed on some of these texts. So how can that media ministry impact that deficiency in an intergenerational way? Um, I think it's really important for us to create opportunities for mentoring and reverse mentoring. When I say reverse mentoring, there's stories of millennials and Gen Zs that are going into boardrooms for with executives to help them understand the technology and the mindset of new generations. And it's really super important for us to understand in the same way that we wouldn't go to a foreign country and not know something about the language and the culture. We are going into new generations of individuals that speak a very different language. Uh, some of you remember... Um, MySpace, uh, remember dial-up, okay? <laughs> that, that was, that's a whole nother language, a whole nother world. And so there are older generations that can benefit from what next generations, digital generations um, know intuitively. They were born and they were raised on the digital landscape. So why didn't we reinvent the wheel or bring in an expert when your grandson can actually teach you what to do? Yes, that's good. Yes, yeah, someone was someone was speaking. 
Okay, sorry about that, sorry about that. But you could follow through with the same question um, that um, London posit, which is um, how do you use social media and other visual other platform to impact different generational core? Maybe uh, Christine, you could um, share a little bit. Uh, and Andrea, Kendra rather, sorry. Kendra, you could share a little bit on that. Yeah, um, so basically what I do with Advent Next um, I've kind of split up some of the people that I'm trying to reach between Facebook and Instagram. Um, Instagram is a, a newer generation, more Generation Z. A lot of Generation Z don't even own a Facebook. Like my nieces, they're 16 and they're like, we don't know how to use Facebook. Like, so that's something that, you know, recognizing your audience um, and recognizing the types of conversations that are going to take place on different platforms and trying to be intentional about okay how do i how do i market and package this to different uh to different generations but even more important like there are generational cohorts that you have to be mindful of uh, but i also would even say like there are just niche cohorts you know if you're looking to target just people who have different interests uh, whether you're reaching them on facebook or instagram or on TikTok, and how do you begin to package that in a way that speaks to them me personally i've been actually I have done something that I've never thought I would do. I started a TikTok account yes, <laughs> and yes. I started going through like these one minute blurbs of uh, Ecclesiastes uh, where I'm doing a series on wisdom for living. And I'll take these little gifts, uh, you know, these little short kind of um, emojis kind of way to express different parts of uh, at different parts of the point in the sermon but it's one minute and it's a platform that you just have a very limited time to catch somebody's audience or, or catch their attention and so it really is about diversifying and not um and being intentional about being in the marketplace uh that we're not doing the minimum of uh, posting our stuff our live stream on the internet but how do we really create content that, that people are drawn to in a way that we're intentional about creating it for that specific audience Yes, content creatment. Um, you know something that Dylan Smith said, uh, which was on a, a blog that I recently read. He's a Gen Zer that's a part of Carrie Newhoff's uh, podcast. He said it's still cool for generations to avoid their parents on social media, and that goes to Pastor Kendra's point: is that you have to understand full well there are certain niches within each one of the platforms that it serves predominantly, and um, teenagers and young people are still looking to hang out where the adults aren't. So you have to look and innovate in brand new ways and not get settled into, oh, this is it, uh, no matter how prevalent that particular platform or that media channel is. And, and you know, I wanted to jump in on that. I mean, I'm glad that this is being addressed because there's some issues like, for instance, cybersecurity is a concern. And so this whole thing of IT, we think IT, you think that's the guy at your job that shows up to check or make sure your computers are running optimally. But IT, you know, information technology also is understanding the threats that are out there. As older, as older or younger people, we can get a lot of misinformation. And if we don't understand how to, to validate that, now that makes social media because you get all these memes and all these sayings. So I'm just, uh, you know, glad to hear this conversation so we can even know that that's something that needs to be addressed. And again, for the older population, there's so many of them here yeah. in the US. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think you, you have done, you have actually transitioning us uh, to where we want to go. Oh. Uh, because considering the effectiveness of media ministries, uh, because it's not just about having the account. I, I have a TikTok account as well, but I haven't posted anything as yet. So. <laughs> as it relates to that being effective, no. So, uh, so considering the effectiveness of media ministry, what are the central questions then that ministry leaders should ask? And yes, so Kristen, if you can um, go ahead and, and try to tackle that question for us, um, we would love to hear your response. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the questions that I think of is with technology advancing so quickly, how do churches keep up? As we've mentioned, TikTok, right? That is not gonna be the end of our technological landscape. There are gonna be future social media platforms and uh, media platforms that are going to be created. And as churches are looking to stay on pace, what can we do to really not necessarily be behind the curve, 
but maybe to stay along with that curve. And mm -hmm. does that also mean investing in specific teams that can address these questions? not necessarily having one person, but maybe a team of experts in their given professions who can tackle these mm -hmm. problems that exist so that the church can continue to be in social media to reach people in new ways. Yes, yes. Um, then, then how does the church actually goes beyond that? Uh, because, well, for example, just now, one of the persons I sent uh, through my WhatsApp said, well, I am the audio person at my church. Um, normally, the context that we know audiovisual is you come to church on Sabbath morning, you string up and um, whatever the preacher, whoever is up there say, that's what will come out. So how does the church actually goes beyond that context? Um, I am in audiovisual. I am in, um, you know, the different teams on, in media ministry. How do I really make my ministry effective and not just a plug-in ministry on Wednesday night or on Saturday morning? If I may just to add uh, to my previous statements, you know, there are so many individuals who are gifted in these various um, skill sets that already are willing to work in a church setting. And they may not even be Adventist or Christian, but they, but they have the background, they have the knowledge. And I think that if we leverage their experience and bring them in, that they could be a source for us to be able to have a more diverse and a more um, structured technology platform. And so that would be my uh, answer to that question. Okay, okay. So yeah, I want to hear from, from more of you. I want to hear how do you actually do this? Um, Tim, uh, you're talking about having a team and connecting across the world. Surely for that to be done, it's not um, the team showing up on Sabbath morning. Um, right. how, how it actually happened. Let, let's talk a little bit. Everyone. Yes. And I just want to say this, Tim, before you respond to Larry, that there's some good conversation going on in our personal chat. And I just want to invite all of you um, to say those things. You know, I hear, I hear you guys agreeing and, and pointing out some things that another person is saying. And so please feel free to, to do that live so that our viewers can also benefit from our commentary. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so I think that um, an important thing from a marketing perspective is, you know, really having content that speaks really directly to your target audience. And I think that as our churches have moved online during COVID-19, that has been, there's been opportunities for that, but it's also tough because now we put something on Facebook or on Instagram, it streams to our whole audience. And so we have to think about how uh, we have content that's, you know, deep enough to really engage our seasoned members and our those who are really engaged in the church and how we can also use it as an outreach opportunity to really speak to, um, you know, a first time viewer, somebody who may not know Jesus yet, somebody who may not know Adventism yet. And I think that for YG, um, we are constantly reaching people with different cultures, different backgrounds, different demographics. And so, yeah, it's definitely not just a Sabbath morning thing. There's definitely planning that has to go into that, um, whether it's a blog or social media content or a video. Um, there are, it just requires, you know, thinking really who's our target audience, what um, is their need, what, are, what would really speak to them, and how can we really show them that we are listening to what they need and not just saying what we think that they need. Hey, and, and friends, listen, you have a secret force of individuals that are media savvy. They are anyone under the age of 20. They're broadcasting, they have their own channels, they're gaming with each other. And so you don't have to look at this mysterious target group and demographic, although it's great to bring in the experts to do that. You have young people that are just looking for you to say, hey, would you like to do this or teach me about this? And quite honestly, I mean, I'm not of the age where I can step into a room of teenagers and feel comfortable talking with them in a language that they understand, but their peers can do that. So you can be a really great mentor. And also, I just wanna make sure you're really clear on this. You can empower these teams and employ them in the ministry of your church by buying them pizza. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. These next generations are media savvy, they're media intuitive, and they're eager to do something for the kingdom of God because the Holy Spirit has impassioned them to make a difference and you just need to create the space for that to occur. Yes, so, yes, I completely, I, completely agree. Was there someone else, go ahead. Yeah, um, I, I want to give other people a chance to speak um, and but I will put this little ditty in that, you know, 
one of the central questions that ministry leaders should ask uh, has to do with uh, how are we going to maintain access as we go forward? Because we know in this digital trans, I, I keep using the word digital transformation because that's really where we are. And I hear many of you using those terms, so I know that you're, 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 you're aware of it. Um, how do we maintain access as people are being pushed into a virtual realm, you know, tele, tele, telemedicine, whether they, last week, they, you know, four months ago, they went to their doctor. Now they're in a, a Zoom conference with their doctor. Tell a school because our schools are going to online learning. And we know that we're just faking like we're gonna go back in and actually, but we are actually gonna go online. Um, so we're, so the population is being pushed into a virtual world. Uh, the anal touch with the analog world is being lost. That physical contact to get in your car and drive to your gym or drive to, to, uh, to, the, to the mall. And they've been shutting down malls for, for the last decade and maybe weren't, we weren't picking up on what that meant. It meant that everybody was gonna start using, using Amazon whether they wanted to or not. And so access is being lost. And so when I look at the use for, for social media and knowing that social media is using the three different types of artificial intelligence, is using, uh, uh, ar using artificial intelligence, is using ambient intelligence and it's using the three different types of AI, artificial, ambient and augmented, it's already using all of that. It's, it's, picking on up, it's picking up on our likes. And so just as the young people, the old people are getting lost in the algorithm that's feeding them on the things they're searching for. And so as a, as a church, we've got to try to keep a focus, help them keep a focus that, wait a minute, all of this media use should really be about ministry. How are we, when we come together like this, what is the blueprint for change so that we can move forward? And, and I'm going to shut up. Right. Yeah, and, 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 and I want us to talk a little bit. I read a book um, not too long ago. It's, um, it, oh man, the, the theme just jumps up my head. Um, but it, it's, it, it's Faith in Exile, Faith in Exile. And um, the, the book, it spent some time talking about digital Babylon. Sometimes as a church, we, we can focus on trying to get the young people out of digital Babylon to get to the Jerusalem. And, 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 and that's why I really like what you have said, Andre. Um, how do we actually fine tune and make it um, able to be effective? Because these same ministries can even, just for something casual um, that just comes to my mind, you can go to the mall and, uh, and maybe get permission and have a live program there, um, just as though so in audio, you say, well, we're going to have Arlington live and person comes and, and, you know, chime in. So while person around the globe are seeing these very same thing happening. Um, so social media, it's a part of life. And, and as Dr. Martin said, you give the youth a pizza um, and let them roll with it. Uh, so it's not to say, take the iPhone, come, everyone put it in the basket, and we're going to get into some real ministry. Real ministry is also in social media. And um, I, I, that's what I'm getting from you, Andre, that we need to know how to make, make it effective and not to just silo it off. I think the balance. Go ahead. Yeah, no, and I think you guys are bringing up some really great points. And I think the question to ask is, who is our, our target audience, right? Are we looking to uh, create an online space for the church that we already have, in which we're just uploading content to help curate and, and continue that uh, community and help it to continue to grow? And if that's your focus, and that's going to be a completely different focus and saying, I want to evangelize through media, and I want to reach an entirely new audience. And, those, and you're going to be asking yourself an entirely different set of questions. So if you're curating just the, the relationships of your current church, or you're curating maybe something even very local, sometimes it can be very hard to target an audience digitally through lo, uh, like digitally in your like local communities, right? It's, it's kind of difficult to target in that area. But if you're looking yeah. to evangelize, I think one, you're coming up against two things. You're coming up with the fact that you don't want your ministry to just be another channel of information, 
because there are a lot more people who are doing it better, who have bigger budgets, who have a million dollar stage and a stage crew and lighting and smoke. And they've been doing this for years and they're much more entertaining to watch, right? And their speakers yeah. are fantastic. And so they, they're very seasoned in that, in that avenue of uh, social ministry and the speaking engagement. So we have to start thinking, okay, well, if we want to build an online community mm -hmm. that's outside of the present community that we have right now, how do we begin focusing on niche, uh, uh, like niche and target uh, audiences? For example, maybe there's an online um, Christian photography uh, group that you want to start. And that's a very niche, it's very focused, and it's something that people can meet and do online. And that's an, also an avenue of evangelism that doesn't require you to have a big stage and a million dollar budget because yeah. the focus of that is relationship. People want community to help them in their creative arts and their creative development. Um, and so what we can offer as in a digital space uh, so that we're not competing against mm -hmm. Um, some of these bigger organizations is we can offer relationship and somebody told me this and this will be the last thing I say is that to know if you're a really great chess player you have to be able to play chess without the queen oh. and for so many people their Sunday service is the queen right and uh, that's been taken off the table a lot because of COVID-19 right and churches no mm -hmm. longer have the queen to play with so how do we mm -hmm. use the other pieces on the board to begin to, to play chess. And if we can win and beat people using these other pieces, then when the queen comes back, then we've got it. Yeah. That better not be your last comment. This point, because I think it's profound what you said. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the central question that we're asking and the one that we need to wrestle with if we're involved in ministry is this issue of relationship. I love that Advent Next is curating a variety of things that are of theological nature, which would typically marginalize a whole bunch of people. But in mm -hmm. just that one word, she's also looking for those that are curious. There are profound conversations to be had by individuals that are curious about theology, curious about philosophy and worldview. And in those places and spaces, relationships can be built that will be profound and the Holy Spirit will use it for tremendous work. Yes, yes, I agree. Yeah, and yeah. so... Go, right. so, so this is my, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how, how to phrase it, but I hear you all talking about, and you know, Kendra just made the point last, of um, having a target audience and this, this idea that social media and, um, and media ministries at large has given us an opportunity to go outside of the church walls. Um, and so how, how? How do I do that? I find myself personally, um, since the pandemic has started, yeah. I've had the opportunity to engage in different types of ministry. And I realize as I'm trying to figure out people to tag, you know, my sermon into or the Bible study or whatever, whatever it is, I see a whole bunch of Adventists in my feed. You know, I mean, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. And so most of the people that I'm friends with, whether I know them personally or not, have, or Adventists, and I've had to consciously say, I need to start intentionally adding people that are not Seventh-day Adventists, and can I be even more real with you, that are not just Black people, right? <laughs> I'm the Seventh-day Adventist, African-American, and most of the people in my friend group are African-American or Caribbean-American, and are Adventists, or at minimum Christian, and so my content that I'm posting is to people who already think like me. And so how, how can we as ministers, whether we are higher ministers or just Christians that understand that what we do is still a ministry to people, how can we utilize um, the, these platforms to reach people outside of our, our bubbles or the demographics that we already represent? Can I jump in? Yes. All right. <laughs> so I feel like I might actually be one of the target audiences. I think I might be the youngest person here. I'm 22. Um, and I'll be honest, most of the people on my on my social media feeds are not necessarily Christian. Honestly, most of my Christian friends don't post anything. And <laughs> when I, I, I pay a lot of attention to, to what the people around me are posting and I pay a lot of attention to the variety of content that I have on my feed. So 
after doing some reflection, I was just like, all my, a lot of my friends are black. Um, so I was like, okay, like, let me like pay attention more closely to like what my Asian American friends are posting or like, I don't know anything about this particular issue. So like, I know that I have this friend who is passionate about um, environmental justice. And I feel a lot of the times, um, like there's, there can be so much overlap between Christianity and the issues that are happening in society and people my age are really paying attention to the issues that are happening in society. And it often feels like Christians are missing from that conversation. Like we will talk about it internally amongst ourselves, but it is not very visible in social media where, where all of that like reflection and thinking and like honestly like constant waves of information are occurring. Um, so I feel like one thing that we as Christians and as churches and as individuals can do is like start sharing how Christianity overlaps with these issues that we are dealing with today. So like, tell me if I'm interested in environmental justice, then tell me how God has entrusted us as stewards of the earth, you know? I'm not or, gonna do, okay. So how, go so my, my, my question is like, I think that you're spot on Kim, and so I'm just gonna poke a little bit. How do I do that? Because as, as you're saying, as you're, you know, I'm friends with, with, with many of you on Facebook already, okay? And all of the, those that I'm on face that I'm friends with on Facebook, they are posting, you know, they're posting about issues in the environment. They're posting about racial injustice. They're posting, you know, these things that the world really cares about right now. I see people posting it, but I think what, what, you're, what you're describing is, is, is kind of the flip side of also what I'm describing is that within your sphere, because you didn't go to an Adventist school, right, in undergrad. And so you're friends with scientists, you're friends, right, with people that, and, you know, with, with non-Christian scientists, to be specific, your friend group is a lot more broad and it's not restricted to Adventism. And so you're getting content that's not restricted to Adventism. But like my news feed, right? So how can someone like me, right, post something that I know the world also cares about and, and make it so that people outside of my little bubble are also getting access to what I have to say or what I have to offer? It's how about creation of content. <laughs> so we need to be able to create that content. We need to be able to share that content. And then we need to interact with people who are on like other sides of the fence. Like we can't only be interacting with like other Adventists who are just like us or like me and my friends who are like, we're, I'm not talking about like environmentalism, for example, from like a Christian perspective. So it's social media is very much about interactions. And if the interaction is not taking place, then like you're not going to see a shift in the conversation. Yeah, yeah. To, to add to that, um, I remember being a teenager uh, living up in the Pacific Northwest, had no idea what the younger generation church was. But Dr. Martin obviously is the pastor who is in every Facebook group on the face of the earth and who posts about the good things happening at our church. And I know that that really helped me to, to find, you know, ministry opportunities in like beyond my local circle. And I think that and now like I'm a part of over a hundred different Facebook groups that mixes with both Avenus and not Avenus. And I think that that's a great way to engage, just building off of what you were sharing. Actually. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, and, and that's, that's very important because you talk about um, connecting with uh, different uh, platforms on, on social media. For yeah. example, every week, Zoom would be liked and shared on one of John Lennon's um, page on CNN. And, 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 and that's all. so by us connecting in different areas, but, but also connect also in different pain, different hurt, mm -hmm. different situations, different needs. And, and, and when we connect in those needs, that's when the church becomes relevant. So all of a sudden um, you look on a church website or a church mm -hmm. Facebook page, and you see that they are actually showcasing um, the funeral of um um slip me slip me just john now lewis, john lewis john lewis yeah and uh, so so the, these these things that we see happen it shows that the church cares about what is happening so i believe it 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 is a catalyst that the church can use to actually connect it's one thing to have the social media platform it's it's another thing to um showcase this is what we're doing every week 
um, the lights on, the smoke um, going, or perhaps the normal service that we know, go up, everyone go to the pulpit, say their thing and thing. It's good to have that, fine. But what next? How do we connect? And I believe um, what you're sharing here is very important. Andre. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm so glad that we came on tonight. I didn't, real, I didn't expect certain topics to even pop up. I'm heard, hearing the word environmentalism, sustainability, big topics, and maybe a whole nother session that needs to be done on that because we're heading into a value-based economy and, and all of that is tied into the understanding sustainability. But um, I, I, to answer London's question the best as I can, drawing from what everyone has said, you know, I think it's time for us to come out of simulation mode, using scientific terms, come out of simulation mm -hmm. mode and enter into field testing. And in 22 years of ministry, uh, I, I, create, I, I, I had some people that didn't like me until I left because when I left, they realized, wait a minute, you know, he was saying we needed to have what I call was and saw. We need to have worship as service and also service as worship. And so, you know, putting them out into, to, you've, been, you've been isolated in this building running 30 ministries, which really ended up amounting to special days with a $1,200 budget where you flew in a speaker and gave him a hotel and gave him an honorarium, paid uh -oh. for lunch, invited all of your friends uh -oh. from the area churches to come in. Uh -oh. and, and then we, we talk about that we're in the arc of safety and we close the doors and we're happy. So, we, so the membership model has not helped us. The membership model is, has hurt us and we need the missional model to come back in where we can worship and be healed, have the ministration of music, have the, ministra the sophist to give us a word, the paid speaker to give us a word. But if all we do is stay, if now in this new iteration, in this new world that we're heading into, the new order of things, if all we use is social media to just recapture what we had before, then we're still in simulation mode. I need us to utilize social media to, to still touch the analog world. But Andre, pastor, pastor, I'm hearing you, right? Okay. But, but I am just a communication um, leader in my church. Okay. Um, so, so how do I get out of that simulation? I have an example for you. Mm -hmm. Because, because um, of course, this is just my ministry, but the other person's women's ministry, youth ministries, uh, they want their day. Um, mm -hmm. I have the resources. I believe I could perhaps make, make it happen, but how do I make it happen while my other ministries just want their days uh, and you know, simulate programs? In fact, um, right now I am thinking hard about it, but my church seems as if it's gonna reopen. They're gonna be a mass exodus back to the old ways and um you know they're gonna really want their day so mm -hmm. how do i get that done I'm, I'm gonna recommend a book called blue ocean thinking um and uh we need to go blue ocean the, the water is red the sharks the, the 30 departments vying for a budgetary cut slice of the local offering which is not even enough to pay the mortgage. I mean, I've had churches with $10,000 a month of mortgages, $11,000 a month mortgages with a total of $16,000 gross income for the month. And so by the time you pay that and help the school and the daycare that the church is running, you're upside down. So uh, I, I believe that um, we, gotta, we gotta start thinking blue ocean. And what that means is get outside of the building, start looking for, for a field, something you can field test. We field tested, we field tested painting old people's homes. All they had to do was buy this, buy the paint. And then what happened is the church ladies, you know, I, I'm, I'm from the West Indies, from the Caribbean. I'm, I'm Jabba Haken, Jamaican, Bahamian American, right? And uh, we, the women would come and paint with us. It became a, no longer a gender, gender driven thing or age driven thing. And then the good thing was people would cook food and drop it off while we're painting. And then it, we open it up, not just to church members, but to the community. And that's just one example. So if you're like the tech leader, what is the need in your community? You're running, running the soundboard and making sure that the Zoom meeting is good and edited and, and music and lighting is good is part of your service to ensure the worship service goes well. But you now can look in the community and say, man, people need to learn how to do X, Y, and Z because they're gonna be left out of the digital age if we don't do this. That, and that doesn't require even the board. You, you know, and especially now it doesn't require the board. You can, set a, you can set a Zoom meeting to educate people, whatever generation, or to use, to empower an army of young people who know technology to now go do stuff. I'm gonna shut up. Well, well um, 
it, it, it's a whole mouthful, but when you talk about don't need a board, are you saying that, man, person should just go and do this stuff? What about the, the service call, etc.? Maybe that's a different um, conversation. Don't want to we, go into that. We, but, I but, can but, say but, one but thing let on me, that. Let, let, me, let me say, let me say, let me say, because uh, I, wa I want us to get this. Can media ministry be effective by itself? And I, and I believe the answer is no. And I want you to interact with this just shortly um, as we're gonna um, segue to the next question by with London. Uh, can media ministry operate by itself? Um, should we not have some kind of inter-ministry connection? Just so if, if we're gonna have intergenerational connection, so it's not the youth doing something there, mm -hmm. the, the, the children doing something, the women's doing, Adventist men doing somewhere, how do we get that happen? Kristen, tell me a little. Yeah, so I think one of the things that I'm hearing on this panel discussion is sort of the, the need for content, but also the need for interpersonal relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the ways to mitigate that gap is to recognize that, especially in this pandemic, people need prayer. People still need hope. And not just, here's a sermon, but hey, what are your prayer requests? And can I pray with you? So we still have cell phones, we still have Zoom, we still have chat features. Why not pray with people? And that still um, goes into intergenerational communities where I, as a person, can still pray with an elderly person. I can still pray with a teenager. I can still pray with other cultures. And it's not invasive because I would say that everyone, whether or not you believe in God, have something that you desire and that you hope for. And so I think that's one of the ways that we can start to sort of break into that personal ministry by having virtual Bible workers, digital disciples, digital evangelists, whatever you wanna call it, individuals who are employed, who are volunteering to uh, reach out through social media to people and to really touch people's hearts and be the love of Jesus Christ to people who are hurting. So Kristen, I'm gonna push you a little bit too. I feel like I'm pushing all the women. I'm gonna push the men in a second too. Um, but I, but I, I wanna push you a little bit and say, and, and ask, you know, how I know, right? But I'm asking you to share with everybody else how you've been doing that, right? And what benef what benefits, what benefit have you seen from doing the very thing that you're inviting the rest of us to do, having these, um, reaching out to individuals, calling individuals, praying with them, what, what, um, what benefit, what, what is the word I'm looking for, what testimony, what, uh, you know, have, have you been able to um, share as a result of doing that yourself? Yeah, so um, back uh, in May or April or June, I don't really remember when, I became a virtual Bible worker for It Is Written. So It Is Written held a very large evangelistic series that was held virtually and with a very large reach. And they uh, recruited uh, virtual Bible workers to reach out to participants who had signed up and registered to attend this evangelistic series. And so with a large list of names, I had the responsibility and, and really the, the task of reaching out to these individuals, asking, how are you doing? This is my name, this is who I am. Do you have prayer requests? Do you wanna do Bible studies? What are your interests? Um, can I pray with you on the phone? And I have prayer requests that I still pray for to this day, though that evangelistic series has ended. And after that evangelistic series, they transition into community groups. So now every Friday, I have a virtual Bible study with individuals who I'm, I've never met in person. And for about 30 to 40 minutes, we simply study the Bible together and we pray. And it's just an opportunity to connect with individuals who may not have a church home, who may not have a community. And I recognize that the best way to get into the opportunity to witness to someone is simply just to ask, what are your requests? What can I pray for? People always have, and it's really interesting that even though they've never met me, they, they don't know what I look like, they have no idea, what, idea who I am, individuals are so willing to share intimate and very private details of their life because they are just so happy that someone has reached out to them to pray with them. 
Okay, yes, so that's, that's, that's powerful. Hold on one second. Let me say this real quick. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that's really powerful because, and, and then I would love to hear what you have to say, Dr. Martin. Um, but that is really powerful because yesterday I was watching this show, a movie. And, and, and that's what um, this, this young boy said, you know, it was, it's the, it was a story about this young boy who was on the street, whatever, and it was kind of like his story to the Lord kind of thing. And, and you know, it started off with this girl um, that he ran into, that he ran into like two days in a row, and one day she just asked him, like, how was your day? And so that's what really struck me about what you're saying, Kristen, is because he was like, you know what, I don't have anybody in my life that asked me that question. At the end of the day, no one is asking me how was my day or, 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 or you know, what did you do? To, no one's asking me that. And I think those of us who have individuals who are asking us that take that for granted that there are individuals out there that aren't being checked up on and aren't being asked the basic questions about what's going on in their life. Dr. Martin, you were going to say something. Okay, so I'm going to build off of what the ladies are building in regards to a mountain here, in regards to Yes, me. yes, yes. All of you have now been appointed to be virtual Bible workers, okay? And this is the deal. This is the basic gist, is that the Holy Spirit through your day is going to prompt you as to people you need to pray over, right? Don't wait until you have an encounter with them. Pray for them in that moment. You'll be in the midst of a conversation in regards to your favorite sports team or in regards to your carburetor or whatever, and you'll get prompts to pray for someone or intersect with them. God will utilize that. And just in case everyone's wondering, you have all now been appointed by YG Church to be ministers, okay? <laughs> ministers, of ministers of reconciliation. I'll send you your certificate of ordination later on. But the scripture says <laughs> you're a Christ follower we have been brought into this world to reconcile people to Jesus. And so there's a great quote uh, that I, I think is a great mantra for media ministry is that leadership begins with listening. Yeah. And so the noise around us is trying to talk at us, talk to us, talk about us, but no one is listening. And when we listen, we begin to hear the heartstrings start to pull and the Holy Spirit, hey, in, in our prayer lives, as, as Kristen was sharing with us here, Maybe some of your prayer life is you just sitting and listening and cultivating the art of listening. Um, mm -hmm. I was on set with uh, Pastor Kendra and, uh, yeah. uh, and, and, and just the part that made it so engaging and exciting was I, I think she heard me beyond wanting to have me talk. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so you all are now all official ministers, not by YG Church, but by, by actually the Church of Jesus that says, yes. I you as ministers of reconciliation in a world that needs to be reconciled to God the Father. Yes, yes, yes. No, I appreciate that. Um, there, yes. there was something that I, that I was going to, the, the, oh, that's what it was, Dr. Martin, what you're saying, what Christian is saying, um, and what, what, what you're saying as well, is this thing, it is pointing out that even in a social media age, in a media ministry age, right, we still need those basic things of communication. Even, right, we, we still need people to, to, to pray for us, to, to let us know that they're praying for us, right? Because I think that there's a, there's a there, it's powerful. It is powerful to just pray for people and God will do stuff in people's lives yeah. without you telling them. But I know for me personally, I mean, when I pray with my friends, I mean, it's just, it's, it does something to my heart, something positive, something something powerful to my heart when I hear my friends or when I hear strangers lifting me up in prayer to know that they're doing it isn't one thing you know to kind of take their word for it is one thing but to hear people doing it is a whole nother thing and um, on, on the same aspect of evangelism there are individuals I do have friends that are not a part of the Christian church they don't believe that you know they they they're not Christian you know they're not even nominal Christians that's not a thing, but they'll still, sometimes they'll still say, can you pray for me? Or yeah. if I say, you know, you're going through this, your husband is going through this, your child is going through whatever, whatever, I'm going to pray for you. They say, thank you. You know, they may say, you know, like send some, send, what do they say? Like send love, like please send love my way or send, you know, but they're, they're asking me to pray for them, right? Like there's this thing going, there's this thing going on, like, oh, send, okay, yeah, I'm going to pray for you. And we're good. So we, we're using different language. But they're saying that I'm in need, and I believe that 
um, that, that you caring about the needs that I have is going to be beneficial to me and my life and my family's life. Um, Kendra, it seems yeah, like- I, 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 know, I know I just indicated to the panel here that we're gonna segue to the next question. Mm -hmm. um, Madison, uh, which I want you to do right after this, but um, I, I, I am really appreciating the discussion because we know how to get the different tools in ministry. We know how to get the right mixing board, the right lighting, the, the, the different platforms. We, we know all of those things, but what I'm seeing, this, these professionals here in, 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 in the aspect of media ministry are saying, guess what? We need to elevate the ministry part. And, and, and many times in media ministry, what we focus on is really getting the tools or the, te the, the technical stuff, having the app, having the website, having you know the different things that are necessary. But as we get those, we forget about the ministry. And I believe what has been Zoom out there to the, 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 the ministry leaders, the person also who are on the receiving end of the ministry is that guess what focus on the ministry yeah focus on the ministry because even the simple telephone you can take that up and it, and it can be powerful uh i you know whenever i get the chance to tune in into your walk um your walk um dr allen it's amazing how you turn just a walk down the road maybe it's not just a walk down the road now but um you turn that into a ministry where people actually look forward to um and so it, it's amazing it's amazing and as was said just now listening and leadership is listening listen yes. to people as you uh, move forward in your minute media ministry so so the question third question was about the advantages and disadvantages um, of mm -hmm. social media in the church and i believe that in many respects we've already tackled that question yeah. Um, of, of how media ministry has impacted in a positive way and in a negative way in the church. And so um, if there was something new that you all wanted to add, then please do. Um, but I also did want to give Kendra the opportunity to respond because um, it seems like there was something that you wanted to say previously. So please, please share with us now what, what that was. Me? Okay. Yeah, Kendra. <laughs> I, your your audio sometimes it goes low and I, I can't. Oh no, okay. Well, now I know, thank you. Um, so I guess actually this is answering the fourth question because I think something that is often incompatible with our Christian ethic in, and social media is this idea of putting your life out there, right? But I think the power that we have even as individuals being on social media is to live your life out loud. And I think that there's a Christian ethic of humility, of discretion, of, of just not wanting to seem like a showboat, that we tend to hide the different parts of our lives that are, are authentic. But Paul in his ministry says, follow me, right? Uh, uh, he says, follow my example if you have any questions of what a Christian should look like. And our lives you know, you know, should be so authentic before God that we can make that same commission, you know, whether it's our diet, whether it's the things that we're reading, whether it's our devotional thoughts for that day. And this is something I'm challenging myself with moving into this next year. It's been a very difficult part of me living my life out loud on my own personal platform. But in that space, I've actually found people who were, we've never had a Christian conversation before, uh, who have reached out to me uh, for prayer, people that I love dearly because they're my friends, uh, but I met them in different spaces in my life. And they're now in a place where they're more open to, to God and a relationship. And because I'm being so open in my faith, uh, they ask and they come to me for prayer. And so that's a part of social media ministry, right? Uh, that we all have a power to participate in. And um, even speaking back uh, to Ashley, what she was saying earlier about how to get involved with uh, conversations that are relevant in your community and your, in your time. How does the gospel not become something that's so sterilized that it has no uh, relevance for the moment that we're living in? Those are some of the conversations I've been trying to curate on Advent Next. Uh, we have an episode on environmentalism in the church, uh, episode 41, if you want to check it out. <laughs> um, uh, but I think, you know, we need 
as lay members and as church members, we actually have to be educated because our opinion as Christian believers sometimes is different than the world, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to be intimidated to enter into those spaces and have knowledgeable, educated, informed conversations uh, if we don't put ourselves to the task to be informed. And so yeah. curating our libraries, curating ourselves in a way where we are excellent in every way, intellectually, spiritually, morally, so that we can enter into spaces and really be a light and a presence to wherever we go. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I'm going to go back to one of the points that you made early on. Um, Andre, I see you wanted to no say problem. something. Exactly. Um, yeah, and I'm, I promise I'm going to give you space. And Thank so I, I just I just wanted to highlight um, what you said early on about living, living our lives so that people can see and just drawing on another uh, point um, out of your overall point is that Paul, we all know Paul's heinous sin you know, most heinous sin. We know it, right? And so in the same vein of um, the, in the, in the same vein of how sometimes we use Christianity to justify us being secretive, right? Or justify our hypocrisy of trying to cover up things because we don't want people to know that I used to do this or I used to do that or that I'm still doing this or I'm still doing that or whatever it may be. Those are the things that make you real to people. And those are the things that actually, if you, if you so allow for individuals to see your full self, then it, 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 it you being real to people then opens up a door for them to care about what you have to say about Christ. And so I just, I just wanted to highlight that point that Kendra just made, um, that as we're using media platforms, um, the actually, you know, I would even say the sin of media is oftentimes the sin of the church. And that is to only show your prettiest face, right? Only show your most handsome face, only show, you know, your, your best self and to hide and pretend like your flaws don't exist. And Preacher. I believe that is a flaw of media so oftentimes, and that is a flaw of the church. And so if we can, 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 can be more real, I believe that we can be that much more of a blessing um, to people. Um, Andre, there was something you wanted to add. Yeah, as we go, I mean, I'm loving this conversation. I wish it could go on for hours and hours and we could all take our mics off and just really get off into it. Because um, I see that we have what we what I see we have here, you know, Accenture, which is one like a consulting company, um, business consulting. They put out a, a, a big report called Industry 2.0, but really, it's, they have an X. I don't know how you can get to the Roman numeral is X is 10, but X.0 or 2.0. And they talk about uh, as we move into the future, we need cross functional collaboration. And so what I'm seeing here tonight is even though a lot of us have ministry roots, all of us have ministry roots, we have different different expertise. And so I'm loving to know that people are thinking of bringing together these minds to understand these things, evaluate and dialogue on these things. What I, what I, what I would like to add as we, you know, we come, come close to the end here is uh, Carl Rogers, the great psychologist, he, talked, he said that people desire two things. They desire, to, they, desire, they desire acceptance and they desire to be put to good use. Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing is the gospel gives us both of those. We're loved yes. and accepted by God, and we can be put, put to good use. And one thing that crosses all generations um, is when we actually put the people of God to good use. You know, what's happening now in our world, if I may take another moment, is that Andrew Yang wrote in his book, uh, if you know Andrew Yang, he ran for Democratic, uh, one of the Democrats running for president at one point. He dropped out fairly quickly because I believe he really was just there to introduce us to universal basic income. That may, may mean nothing to a lot of you or to, to a lot of people listening, but in his book, The War on Normal People, it starts out by saying, I work in a bubble in Silicon Valley and I want you to know we're coming for your jobs. And then now a, few, a year or so later, a few years later, um, we eight, so many millions of people are unemployed and wondering if they're gonna go back to work. The fear of uh, the police departments as they're, the cry for defunding the police is in place, the police departments are pivoting by adding social services and mental health services and drug addiction services to their portfolio now. So, they, so they're, they're hiring these professionals on. Uh, stay with me now, because social media plays a part in this. So we, the church now, one of the touch points that we could be mindful of is again, 
using social media to create awareness and preparedness of the coming scenario where we, we're not just gonna be preaching a word, we need to be actually ministering to the needs of people in these areas. The, the new value, and I'm gonna end with this, the new value-based economy, because I'm old, I gotta write stuff down. The new value-based economy, 80% of all industry service jobs can be replaced right now. You think they kicked the folks out of the meat factories because of one case of COVID? No, they're, re, they're uh, uh, go read Bloomberg, go read Forbes. They're retrofitting those meat cutting facilities with robots that cut meat. They're re refitting the food, the fruit and vegetable factories with, with robotics that can package these things. People are gonna be out of work, afraid, and as the, well, I guess we can't go into the food shortage tonight, so I'm gonna stop there. As that comes, <laughs> how are we gonna use social media to get to, 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 to rally the, the, the people to know where we really stand today. And I, I just hope that uh, the younger generation, we're all gonna be affected by this. I pray that we, we learn to use these platforms in that way. Yes, yes. No, it was good. It was good. You know, at the London. end, of, every time you talk, so I'm gonna poke fun at you because I'm poke fun at everybody else. At the end, you say, now I'm gonna shut up. And no, you're not. Yeah, you. But that's okay. You're not supposed to, you're not supposed to shut up. You're supposed to be talking. Can, can, I just, can I just put in a plug here? And you know, that's what um, Zoom Hope Live is doing. Uh, because a few weeks ago, we had a conversation on uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, and, and that's going to be necessary. All these skills, all these gifts that God has given individuals, they are assets to be used um, so that individuals can grow and their families can be fed and so forth and so on. So, and in fact, we're coming back the end of this month with um, an episode two, uh, a part two rather, of um, entrepreneurship. So I believe that's what you have alluded to just now, uh, Pastor Campbell, is that it's not gonna go back to, to, to business as usual. So absolutely, because, absolutely not. because life will not go back to business as usual, the mm -hmm. church and its ministry and in particular, media ministry, because it is media ministry that gets everything out there, right? It, it, media I'm ministry. Past, Pastor not, Allen, go ahead. I see him suiting up to go. I want him to go. Right? But go ahead, you Pastor. Not go back. You, well, you can, but it is dangerous to go back to business as usual. There's yeah. nothing to go back to. Here's a disadvantage. Here's a disadvantage about social media. There is so much, so much information and so much white noise that if we're not careful, people will miss out on the real meat. And mm. so I refer over to what Tim's doing. And Tim innovated, he saw a particular niche need, which was some what uh, Pastor Kendra and others were talking about here, of young professionals in our church. And quite honestly, in the Adventist, in the Adventist subculture, unless you have the 2.5 kids, once you graduate from college, there's no place for you. And so creating these places where they're feeding one another and helping one another through this time, I think that one of the things that we have to understand when we're talking about media, we have so much white noise now. And to your point, I love Andre's point here, is that social media is pretending to know us better than we know ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. When my wife buys something on Amazon, I start getting ads on my Facebook in regards to what she bought. So <laughs> to know me based on someone else's um, analytics. They're yes, telling I, you what to buy her next. Yeah, I mean, I am, I am, I am not, I won't tell anymore. She's right here. So <laughs> in any case, uh, I love what Tim's doing here because we get back to the meat here of what was shared earlier by Ashley is that there is this, there is this dance of relationship between listening to people and where they're at reflecting on who you are and wearing your own skin. I'm gonna say something to Pastor London's point. Just be yourself because you know what? Adventists need Jesus too. So those Adventists that are part of your feed, they need to, some of them have to find Jesus. And in the midst of all the white noise that we create out there in the subculture of Adventism, Jesus can be found. Yeah. Uh, I would love for Tim to just talk a little bit about what he's discovering as he's talking with young professionals literally around the world because of the benefits of social media. Yeah, um, and, and even as Tim, I would like for Tim to touch on that right now. Yes. Um, but but okay. as, you know, as you say that, you, you, in reading the same book I alluded to, Faith for Exile, mm -hmm. it says that um, social media knows what you like. Um, 
so the church also must know what people like. And as a result, I should open up a feed and because of what I like, a church is feeding into my life, a particular product, right? And not just Amazon or some other ministries out there realize that I've been searching for this to benefit me, benefit my children on YouTube. But the church should pick up that feed. And the moment I am on YouTube, I should see the church actually saying, guess what? This is what I have that I can offer your children. Um, the world is doing that. Tim. You know, to build off of what you just said, um, at YG, I'm really blessed because they have put some of their evangelism budget toward, you know, digital outreach. So I had a PR digital advertising budget that I'm able to use to, you know, target individuals on social media who might not otherwise find out about the church. And I think that, you know, our churches, our conferences, we have big, big budgets when it comes to evangelism season to send out tens of thousands of mailers to everybody's house. And out of those tens of thousands of mailers that are the same for everybody, um, we may get 15 or 20 people who actually come to the series. But when you're actually targeting people on social media and you're, um, it's able to automatically actually automate messaging that's very targeted toward individuals and toward their needs and to, to their search habits. And I think that that's a, a very important area to um, be exploring as we try to communicate. Through Tim, digital. how do you do that? <laughs> so how do you how do you do that right because that I mean yeah. that's what I'm trying to find out right sure, so sure. if if I'm trying to get content to people uh -huh. maybe there's someone who's newly you know looking up things about yeah. um mm -hmm. Jesus or mm -hmm. what whatever have you and and but they're not a part of a community yeah how 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 do I get access to this data that you know um uh -huh people have access to, right? <laughs> These advertising companies yeah, have access to. Sure. How do I get access to them? Sure, sure. So if you don't already know, Google and Facebook own half of the world. So Instagram is owned by Facebook. Uh, things like YouTube, it's owned by Google. So I always tell people when you're trying to get into digital advertising, those are the two kind of companies to start off with. Um, both of those companies have their business side, which is the back end where organizations and businesses can actually um, target individuals based on their demographics, based on their search habits, um, and you would bid on certain keywords to actually get placement on the web, whether it's through a Google search or whether it's through an app or whether it's through a social media feed. Um, yeah. And it would really align with what a person needs. So. And, th and that's important. I appreciate that. So it means, therefore, that ministry will have to spend. Um, yeah. We can't just say, yeah. well, you have, we have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Put some money into the Facebook page yeah. so you can do ads. Mm -hmm. And of course, you say, well, you know what? I want to reach some persons in Kenya. You got to pay for it. Um, yeah. You can't just say, you know what? Just let it be uh, organic. In some cases, it would be organic. But, mm -hmm. but in many cases, you have to put the money there. Yeah. Because that's what Digital Babylon is doing. Yeah. They are and putting the money there. Exactly. And there's like something I learned actually at a meeting with our evangelism director for Texas conference. And he was telling me that based on a, it was a 2012 survey, but the, the data is still, you know, it's very true. There were over 1,200 counties in the United States that had no Adventist presence out of the 3,000 counties, about one out of three counties. And there's a lot of rural areas that we're not going to be able to, you know, reach in a face to face manner um, that we won't necessarily have enough people to build a church there. But through targeted digital advertising and by sending our message there through putting a little bit of money behind it, we can reach people for Jesus. Yeah. I mean, what I hear you saying, Tim, and for the for the sake of, you know, you've been, I feel like you've been sitting there with a pot of gold this whole time, <laughs> just quiet. And I don't appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I'm 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 trying to figure out that so I, I had a question, but I really uh -huh. what you what you just gave was was really, really valuable. Mm -hmm. You're talking about using media, how to access them. Um, man, and the question, the question just, just left my mind. Oh. Um, but I would love, I think Larry's going to give us yeah. our last, um, our last discussion yeah. point. Yeah. So, and I would yeah. love, love, love to hear from you again, Tim, <laughs> um, in, in, in this regard, because I mean, that, that was the heart and soul of my, many of my questions earlier, right? Is mm -hmm. how, 
do we get access to people that we do not already have access to? Mm. How do yeah. we communicate and connect with individuals that think differently from us? Yeah. Because there's an algorithm, yeah. right? Yeah. There's yep. an algorithm to our social media accounts to where the stuff that I'm flooded with is based upon the the things that I'm that I'm liking. It's like yes. this revolving, you know, cycle or door to where I don't really have access to the things outside of that unless I'm intentional. Mm -hmm. And so I hear you talking about from an advertisement point of view, um, but how can the average person yeah. um, do that as well without? Mm -hmm. um, I hear the I see the term optimization was used um, and getting in touch with. Uh, Google and, mm -hmm. and Facebook, how, how, but how can the average person kind of disturb the algorithm of getting the same kind of messages? Yeah, definitely. So I'm I think sorry. that a big way that brands are organically getting things out there, I mean, by organic, I mean, without necessarily spending on advertising, mm -hmm. is that they have very well-structured ambassador programs or influencer programs where they are really empowering their followers, the people who are engaged with their brand or ministry to really have organic conversations that builds up what they are doing. And I think that as churches, we often like, we're good at telling our people like, this is what you should believe in. This is how you can have a glow, give it somebody a glow track, how you can have a Bible study. But I think that if we think about things a little more broadly and think about how we can make ambassadors and every member uh, through digital media, that's, that's an important thing because for it to happen in an organic factor, there needs to be really intentional things happening from individuals. It's really building on the objectives of the church. Yeah, and, I, and I'll say this and then I'll, Larry, you know, I'll yeah. stop so you can lead us into our last point. Um, but something else that you said that I just wanna highlight mm -hmm. is that, and all many of you have kind of said already, I think Andre started it off by saying, we spend so much money, right? to fly people out yeah. and whatever. The church already spends so much money on ministry and we don't get a lot of what they say dividends. We don't get a lot of we don't get a lot of production or results <laughs> afterwards, right? But we spend so much money, so much effort in this. Um, but I hear you inviting us as a church to 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 spend some effort into um, into media ministry. Yeah. And in what you're saying specifically with the advertisement piece and learning how to connect with people outside of our circles. Um, and so redirecting those funds for where the world is already going, where we are and where we're yeah. going um, to, to just kind of follow that trend to continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. Yeah, and just to add one last thing, um, I think that so often we think like we need to advertise the ABC, the, what the facts of what we're trying to do. But it's so important that what we are promoting and putting money behind is really relevant. It's really bite-sized. It's really relatable. And it's really like just, it's very engaging in that sense. Because if we just send them an ad that tells them this is coming up, it's not going to work. So, Okay. Yeah. So y'all need to um, pay Tim to teach yeah. you how to do these things. <laughs> that, 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 All right. I need to talk to Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Allen, Dr. Allen, um, please, please. Um, I want to start with you. I want to start with you um, as we go through. I want to start with you. Um, please share a message of hope to those who believe that they don't have anything new to give on media platform. I, I, I want to start with you and I want each one of you, just in a, in a nutshell, just give that message of hope because we definitely could go on and on and on. <laughs> yes. You know, as I see, I see even particular London, that you're so immersed um, um, in how so to reach these target groups. And of course, that's where the money comes in um, as we have to reach these individuals. So, so let, let, let's start with you, um, Dr. Martin, then we could go to Kendra, then Ashley, then we go to Campbell, Tim, and we'll finish with Kristen. Um, what I will share this, with you is that you, you are the message. You are a unique, diverse, opinionated individual that has a love for Jesus. And so as opposed to sharing someone else's message, let Jesus be a part of your life. And even if you don't know how to do, to, to do media ministry, hey, everyone has a, a selfie husband. 
Everyone has someone that can run a camera or share a blog or something, but what God's doing in your life is really the best media that there is. And to the degree that you learn how to use social media, the degree you learn how to do broadcasting, it just amplifies what Jesus is doing in your life. And as long as you're authentic to the good, the bad, and the ugly in regards to what's happening in your life, it will help exhibit God's grace. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Kendra? Um, I would, you know, affirming, you know, what uh, Dr. Martin was saying, you know, we're all opinionated individuals. Uh, my only uh, uh, exhortation would be to be an informed, opinionated individual um, and to be educated uh, about the topics that you are bringing into the marketplace. And I feel like people will be drawn to you because of your wisdom, right? Uh, when we have this balance that we can bring from the uh, Christian perspective, from the gospel perspective, and we can speak in a way that is a healing balm to the nations, as well as, uh, you know, cutting to the inner parts of the heart. It's, it, it's a very, um, it's an art, you know, and it's something that we have to practice and be intentional at. So if you want to be in this space, I think there's no getting around actually putting in the time and the work and the effort um, to learn how to do it well, just like you would with anything. Yes, yes, yes. And your puppy just just steal the show just now behind you. <laughs> yeah, but but honestly, um that, that's very profound. Tim. Yeah, so I think that something I would say is that even if a person is not the techiest on social media, everybody yeah. can learn from somebody in a certain way and they can also mentor somebody in another way. I think that the people who are really good at social media, they have a lot of things to learn in um perhaps other aspects of ministry in the same way they can also be helping older people to use TikTok. And so I think that it's a multi-path um, relationship in each element and that no matter what, there's something to learn and something to give. Yeah, so you you have a TikTok account, um, Tim? I don't, like, but maybe like now I do. <laughs> like uh, I'm gonna check out um, Kendra's TikTok account. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Ashley, what would you say? Um, I just like to echo the sentiment that in order to be effective in this ministry, you have to be your authentic self. And sometimes that just means reflecting personally and then being able to share like how God is relevant to you in your life and to all of your passions. Mm -hmm. Profound, very profound, very profound. Yeah. Um, yes, Campbell. Andre. Um, well, you know, as, as our world continues to change, um, and as people are searching for meaning, I would hope that <clears throat> we would, I, I sincerely hope that what we would end up doing is cease from seeking to become the church that fully fits what the church manual says and focus more on becoming the church that will meet the needs of our community, both online now uh, since our gatherings are now more like this and offline in smaller cottage size, very careful when I say that cottage size ministry efforts that will keep maintain that access. Let's remember more is caught than is taught. Let's also remember that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So let's not lose that element yeah. in all that we do. And I'm excited to hear what everybody's up to. God bless you. Yeah, and, and, and definitely, definitely not only for those ministry leaders on the ground, but um, certainly even those ministry leaders in administration, et cetera, need to um, even place within these books um, nuggets that can really help and foster growth um, and financing in areas of uh, media ministry. Uh, so um, that's Kendra. Kristen, sorry. Yeah, I would say one of the reasons why people maybe fearful to enter into media ministries because they think that their message has already been duplicated and already exists in the world. And I think that one area that will never be duplicated is your own personal story and people love stories. And so finding creative ways to be visual communicators, visual storytellers, um, sharing your personal testimonies, your experiences of how God has delivered you and provided victory in your life will give people a sense of hope for a better tomorrow. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Um, London? Yes. <laughs> you and I know how long we have looked forward to this program, uh -huh. uh, which is, of course, it's more than a program. Today, it was indeed an awesome ministry experience. Mm -hmm. uh, 
what, 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 would, you, what would be your take back um, um, from this? My take back, if I could share it with you first, would mm -hmm. be go viral. Yeah, yeah, go that, viral. that would be mine. Go viral. In, in the Bahamas, we say go viral. <laughs> right? So go viral, go viral. Go viral with what? Ministry. Yeah. Ministry. Um, reach people everywhere where they are. That's what Jesus did. Um, yeah. That's my take back. What's yours? Yeah, go 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 viral with the gospel, right? We we trying to go viral with. I'm guilty, right, with these different challenges and stuff. Trying to start the new challenge, but go viral with the gospel, and maybe we can turn some of these challenges into gospel challenges. I mean, there's been some. Okay, but anyway, there was something um, that that Christian um, said about going, be, being your authentic self and, and with the question, Larry, that you just asked, I mean, everyone was talking about being your authentic self, really. But with the question that you just asked um, at the end there about doing something new is, or feeling like you don't have anything new to add, that's something um, that Kim said earlier is really, really kind of struck me. That's kind of what I'm going to be walking away with that um, is, is that I feel like what she's saying she doesn't see in her news feed, that's all I see in my news feed, right? And so I'm saying to those who feel like they don't have anything new to add that that's, it's not true. It's not true um, that you don't have anything new to add or that your contributions will be useless. I don't believe that your contributions will be useless because I think so often, similar to this aspect of voting, right? We say, oh, I'm not gonna go vote. Like my one little vote doesn't matter, right? In the grand scheme of things. But if you have a million people who think that, right? Then it, 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 it does, it does um, eliminate a big chunk of, of the world that could positively influence things. And so I'm saying to you that you can posit positively influence things um, by, by putting God Gospel messages out there, even if you feel like it was said before, because there's a unique way that you're going to communicate it. And there's a unique sphere of influence that you have that I don't have, right? Um, and, and the next person does not have. And so please, please use the gifts and the talents that God has given you, that you have acquired um, through, through different means, because we do need to hear your voice. We do need to hear um, and, and experience what you have to offer. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So... On behalf, of course, of our exciting panelists, you have heard from Kristen, Kristen Thomas, Dr. Alan Martin, Ashley Gentles, you have Tim Kowaska, you have Kendra, uh, and Andre. On behalf of them, we just want to say thank you for joining us. I am your host, Larry Green. And I am your co-host, D. London Anderson. All right, so I want you to just Keep me the ministry in front of you. Whatever you have, whatever God has placed in your, in your hands, you know what that is. Use it for the advancement of his um, mission, his gospel, and of course, for his glory. So have a blessed week until next week. This is Zoom Hope Live. <laughs>